Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test, and thank you, Colin, for that introduction. That is really awesome. Tonight, we're going to talk about holiday driving. We're going to talk about how to survive the parking lots. We're going to talk to you about driving on long trips when you're going to visit your family, and we're also going to talk about the Christmas parties and not drinking and driving. So stick around. We'll be right back with that information. <laughs> Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about holiday driving. And yes, there wasn't any yelling this week in the introduction. Uh, bashedly, I say that there was some yelling last week when my kids were here and were not being quiet when I was doing the live stream. <laughs> and I forgot to turn the microphone off. Now, if you notice some red marks on my face, which I can see here, uh, I had some, my face marks really easily and I'm involved in jujitsu and it's marking up my face a little bit so it's no there's no weird rash or anything on my face it's it's from wrestling and those types of things so that's what's going on with my face <laughs> and uh, so what else do I need to tell you happy holidays Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates Christmas or whatever your tradition is all the best to you and your family over the holidays and we look forward we can talk a little bit about that and have some fun uh, with Santa Claus coming uh, two more sleeps very exciting uh, my kids are very excited on all of that and yes <laughs> 217 got run over by a reindeer excellent song by the Irish Rovers uh, one of their best so uh, holiday driving uh, without further ado here just let me check and make sure I got everything set up here uh, yeah I think I do here so uh, we'll just wait for people to get uh, going here Corey, I don't think you had to delete that message. Corey is here too. Where's Corey? Is Corey here? Oh, I thought I saw you there, Corey. Anyway, Corey's here. Uh, Corey is the moderator. Colin is also the moderator. Co Colin is at a Christmas party, so he's kind of back and forth. Uh, Jesse's taking uh, his or her road test tomorrow. And uh, good luck with your road test tomorrow. That's going to be really great. Uh, Jaden. Uh, you are most welcome. Excellent. Well, I'm glad that we could help out there, Jaden. All right, so we're going to head over to the PowerPoint presentation here, and we'll get that going, and then we'll come back and uh, uh, answer questions, have a discussion about Christmas and holidays and those types of things. So just bear with me while I get that going here. There we go. So holiday driving. And yes, uh, if you notice anything interesting about the thumbnail, hint, hint, look at Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so yes uh, so holiday driving that's what we're going to talk about for those of you who are new to smart drive test my name is Rick August and uh, I was a truck driver in the 1990s uh, became a licensed uh, commercial driving instructor in 1997 and my expertise is in air brakes so I've been a, a driving instructor for 20 years now or more it's hard to believe it's been that long uh, 2006 I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with a doctorate in legal history for those of you who don't know legal history is the study of policing courts and prisons and my expertise is in policing oddly enough as it relates to traffic and while I was in Australia and going to university there I drove buses for Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines as well so I have uh, expertise in both uh, driving trucks, buses, and uh, taxi cabs, oddly enough, as well, a long time ago, and driving uh, coaches uh, for Greyhound, highway coaches, and those types of things. And most of my truck driving was over the road, so I did that as well. Uh, I kind of, this kind of fell off the shelf here a little bit, kind of fell off the side of the desk with the Facebook Mastermind group, but there is a Facebook Mastermind group, and you can find that down in the description there, the link to that. Do head over there and sign up, because lots of great information, lots of great discussion over there. Uh, at the Facebook group and I do post the videos that I put up on YouTube and those types of things I do natively publish them to Facebook as well so they're over there as well so uh, if you're looking for any information want to share uh, your ideas and thoughts about driving or the driving profession or anything that you're doing winter driving and whatnot all of that is really great uh, and helps everybody out <clears throat> so I did get a video up this week <laughs> the video many months in the making if you did in, in fact watch the video multi-lane turns and actually while I was shooting the video somebody cut me off on one of the multi-lane turns and that is in the video and I talk about that as well and, and uh, strategies and techniques that you can put in place to 
uh, counter other people making mistakes, deviating out of their lane or crossing and cutting you off <laughs> in traffic. So that's what the video is this week uh, on multi-lane turning at complex intersections. Now, uh, just the first thing I want to say about holiday driving is, yes, we're all busy. We're all in a hurry to get to the malls and those types of things. Uh, but you know that we're coming into the last days of man shopping. <laughs> women had their shopping done in June for Christmas <laughs> so the last two days here we're I'm a little late getting doing this live feed but uh, allow yourself a bit more time because know that the grocery stores the malls the shopping plazas everything is going to be incredibly busy at this time of year so know that what might take you usually a half an hour to go to the mall and grab whatever you need uh, it's probably gonna take you an hour an hour and a half especially when you're getting into the parking lots and those types of things and at Walmart and whatnot, you're probably going to be parking at the back of the mall. And I do recommend that you do try to park as far away as you can because it's just it's going to be busy. And the closer you are to the mall or shopping center or whatever, uh, it is going to be busier near the front. So know that and allow extra time. Make sure that you're scanning visually, vigilantly while you're driving in the parking lots because there are going to be lots of pedestrians. There's going to be lots of families and lots of kids and everybody's excited <laughs> so just you know take your time try to back into the parking spaces that's going to make it a bit easier for you to get out because you're going to drive out of the parking space as well and excuse me if you have trouble with reverse stall parking have a look at this video here uh, how to reverse stall park and that'll give you some uh, refresher tips on how to do that reversing uh, if you do see this video this is uh, I am currently going through the list of videos that I'm going to make next year and making plans about what I'm going to make next year. This is a whole new thing for me about making plans because <laughs> many times uh, what I'm doing is uh, the day of shooting the video I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do and I, and you know it, it leads to me not being as productive as I could be so what I'm trying to do is come up with a list of videos for next year and this is one of the videos that's on the list for reshooting. Uh, reversing so if you are looking at this video and you're doing a road test make sure that you leave your seatbelt on for the duration of the road test because one of the things I say in there is you can take your seatbelt off and most places in the world you can take your seatbelt off according to law but not for the purposes of a road test okay so if you are backing up in a parking lot or places that are busy go slow back in observe and take note of your surroundings one of the number one reasons for backing crashes is because drivers put the vehicle in motion before they look, right? And if you look at the video that I put up this week on multi-lane turning, somebody did that to me in Kelowna, began to change lanes, and then when they started changing lanes, actually did a shoulder check and looked and, and realized that I was right beside them. So that's the other thing you can see is, is that a lot of people will move the vehicle before they look. So try and keep that in place that you're looking before uh, before you're moving the vehicle is what I was trying to say. All right, so we're in winter time in the Northern Hemisphere and a lot of you are gonna be driving around, you're actually gonna have snow and know that it's gonna be more slippery. I'll just say something really quickly about winter driving because I have a whole course over at the Smart Drive Test website for $7, that awesome, great price of $7. Look down in the description there and you can get the link over to the uh, winter driving smart course. And I just got it finished up today. I got the last video. I just got to upload it to the course and the course will be completed. And I just have to put up some review questions for that course, but it's a great course for $7. All right, so know that if the temperature is around zero and there's a bit of snow on the road, it's going to be much more treacherous to drive than if there's two feet of snow on the ground and it's minus 20. All right, because when it's minus 20, the roads, uh, the ice is sticky and you get a bit of traction. Whereas when the temperature is right around zero, Think of it like a Zamboni on an ice hockey rink. After the Zamboni goes out and floods the ice, when there's a layer of water on top of the ice, that's what makes it exceptionally slippery. So in the winter time when the temperature is around zero, the ice is kind of freezing, it's kind of thawing and freezing and thawing and freezing, and there's a layer of water on top of the ice, therefore the ice is more slippery. And know that at intersections, uh, because the cars are coming up and they're hitting the brakes and they're sliding a little bit, they're, they're creating friction, and they're creating heat which melts the ice a little bit and puts a layer of water on top of it and causes it to be exceptionally slippery. Now, the other thing is, is when you go off to <laughs> the mall to buy your Christmas presents and your 70 inch telly, uh, you know, for your spouse for Christmas, think about load security. 
Uh, I know that we're getting down to the wire here and, and actually getting the shop to deliver it is probably not going to be an option for Christmas time. I know that I looked at something on Amazon the other day and it wasn't going to come until Friday, so well after Christmas. So think about how you're going to get your stuff home and are you going to get it home safely because uh, you can't strap a fridge to the back of a Ford Taurus. I mean, you can, but you probably aren't going to be able to transport it as as uh, you know, safely as you should be able to going up and down the roadway. So think about that. Now, if you're going on long trips over the holidays and you're going to visit family and friends and those types of things, uh, you know, plan your route, plan where you're going to stop, and plan to stop every couple of hours on these long trips. And if, especially if you got kids with you, because you know their bum gets sore too, sitting in the seats and those types of things. And I can tell you uh, from my own experience with my children and their booster seats, those booster seats aren't very comfortable. It's a bit of cloth over plastic. It's not like the actual seats in the vehicle that are a bit more uh, comfortable to sit in for a long time. So plan a stop every couple of hours. And if you've got children as well, uh, go on to Google Maps. Or if you look at the navigation and route planning video, uh, I actually show you how to use Google and I use how to use the maps and you can plan to stop at playgrounds and coffee shops and other places where the children can get activities and those types of things. So those are a couple of good videos to look at. Uh, the trip planning for trucking smart there, that's a bit more for commercial drivers, but the one at the top is definitely how to use your phone, how to use Google and plan a trip and execute uh, that uh, plan that you work out there. Christmas parties, getting yourself home safely for Christmas. Okay, one of the things, one of the most uh, poignant, wise things that were ever said to me about Christmas parties is to plan your ride before you start drinking because you're going to make much smarter decisions when you're not inebriated. <laughs> okay, and one of the other things, and I need to find the link for this, when I'll put this link up with when I put the replay up as well. Mads Contract for Lice, and you, and you can just Google that. And actually, I think it's one of the greatest tools uh, that we have for driving and driving so you're not inebriated while you're driving. And Mads Contract for Life is essentially a contract between you and your loved ones, whether it's your kids, your kids and your parents, or some other relative, or a friend, or somebody else that simply says that the two parties agree to come and get the other person no matter where they are, what time of the day it is, if they've been drinking so that way you have you know you have a ride you can call other people and they're not going to get upset at you especially if you know it's adolescents teenagers those types of things and they took the car and they've been drinking they know they can call their parents and their parents are not going to unload on them uh, you know when they come and get them to pick them up so know that as well know that driving if you're driving at this time of year and you're out late at midnight one o'clock two o'clock in the morning know that there are most likely going to be people who are drinking and driving that's just a fact of life so just know that and if you see the car doing something strange while you're driving at night and those types of things just give it lots of distance now getting home if you don't have a contract for life these are some ways that you can get home in the winter time after you've been drinking at a party so like my mom says get drunk and be somebody therefore <laughs> you could pretend you're a superhero and fly home uh, number two you can take a cab Number three, you can ride the bus, especially on New Year's Eve. Most transit companies are transit authorities in the cities here in Canada and the United States. Most of the rides are free, so you can ride the bus. Uh, get yourself a designated driver. Kind of sucks for the designated driver, but you can get a designated driver. And be sure to give them cash for gas. Uh, you can walk home. You can run in spurts because, uh, you know, running continuously is just too hard. Uh, you could crawl, but you need to dress for the occasion because, you know, your hands and knees are uh, getting very cold in the snow, especially if it's cold outside. Uh, drive home the next day. That way you get free breakfast when you stay at your friend's place. Uh, you know, get your fr drunk friend to give you a piggyback ride home. That's another way you can get home. Uh, take the shuttle service offered by respect respective establishments. Many of the places here in Canada are going to have shuttle services that are going to get you home. And if it's a, a big Christmas party and those types of things, oftentimes they're going to hire limousines and other uh, give you cab chits and whatnot to get home. So have a bash at your party. That way you don't have to drive at all. Everybody else can come over and you can just have a big slumber party. All right, number 12, you can go to the pizza shop, order a pizza be to deliver your home address and catch a ride with the pizza delivery guy and if that doesn't work then you can go down to the Chinese place and get them to give you a ride home. Make sure you give them a good tip though when you do get home and number 13 don't fry bacon in the nude that is definitely not a good tip for getting home safely uh, from the Christmas party and the New Year's Eve party. 
All right, now, it, road rage might be something that you have to deal with. Have a look at this video on learning to drive and dealing with aggression as well because everybody's, you know, not everybody's all happy and jolly at Christmas time. Some people are fairly stressed out because there's a lot going on and uh, other reasons and whatnot. So know that people are going to, uh, you know, lose their cool. They're, so when that happens, you know, breathe, uh, take your time. Give lots of distance. Don't make eye contact. Do not unload, uh, unlock the car doors if somebody does approach you while you're driving. And if they persist, uh, you know, just drive to the local police station. Do not drive home. Drive to the local police station and do not engage with them. Do not make eye contact. And as I said, do not open the doors. All right. And when you do go out to drive around and do your Christmas holiday shopping, try and plan your shorter trips into longer trips. So, for example, don't just say, "Oh, I'm just going to run out to the liquor store and get a case of beer." Say, I'm going to go to the liquor store, I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'm going to stop at the mall and pick up that last present, I'm going to go, you know, wherever else you're going to go on those types of things. So, that's another thing that you can do for Christmas. All right, and then finally for Christmas and happy holidays for all the smart drivers out there, I'm going to suggest that we have a little bit of courtesy. We just take a little bit of time, and well, we don't take any time of it our day to be nice, <laughs> and random, act of con uh, random acts of kindness. I do encourage these you know, not just for the holiday season, but also all year round. Uh, if you're in the drive through uh, you know, buy the car behind you a coffee. Uh, leave the dollar in the shopping cart when you get the, when you're at the mall and those types of things. You know, and let other people in. Uh, you know, if people are waiting to get in and traffic and those types of things. And, you know, one of the biggest things we can do at Christmas time and any other time of the year is look at strangers in the eye and smile. Because I can guarantee you from my own personal practice that everybody's going to smile back at you. So I mentioned previously the Winter Driving Smart Course, which is available over at the uh, Smart Drive Test website for $7. Uh, the regular price is $37.97, and you can pick that up for 80, more than 80% off that course. Uh, the modules in the course, common crashes, gearing up, white knuckle driving, uh, throwing down, everything that Old Man Winter can throw down. So we teach you techniques of dealing with fatigue, driving in deep snow, uh, understeering, oversteering, and skid control. Uh, Fatigue, driving when you're tired, and are we there yet? And also we have navigation and route planning as another one of the modules. And there are all review questions uh, for the course, and there's a final test, and there's a certificate that you can get as well. And that's a great course. Look down in the description, and you'll find the link for that. So if you have a, a road test over the holidays, uh, good luck on that. Congratulations to the smart drivers that have passed in the last week. And happy holidays to all of the smart drivers out there. So now we'll head back over here and we'll answer questions that anybody might have about passing a road test, Christmas holidays, and all the other fun stuff. All about vehicles. How are you, my friend? <laughs> road rage equal 911. Not always calling, but sometimes if they do uh, happen to uh, start, you know, get out of their vehicle and do confront you. All right, Jesse, during my rock, mock road test yesterday, I had someone fly past me at bolting speeds. It was ruthless. <laughs> it's going to happen, Jesse, unfortunately. Yes, it does happen. Uh, da -da -da. There we go. Jano, thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, Jano, I guess I'm not meeting the speed of the other vehicles. Uh, have a Merry Christmas. I recently passed my G test. Congratulations, Jano. Uh, and my only problem the examiner had was I was too slow on the highways, but I was going 9,500 kilometers hour on the freeway. Uh, so were you keeping up, were you doing the speed limit then, Chano? Yeah, probably. Mervet, thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, <laughs> don't think that CR England is Satan. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Jesse, excellent. Ruth, uh, good luck. Okay. Moki, are you explaining about CDL Big Truck? Uh, Moki, what do you want to know about CDL Big Truck? Because I can answer questions about that. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, questions. Let's see. What else do we need to talk about about Christmas? Some years ago when I was driving truck, I ended up driving truck over Christmas. And I was in, I remember I was in Savannah, Georgia. And <laughs> what the trucking company got me for my Christmas present was they got me a hotel room. Instead of staying in the... Uh, truck I they actually got me a hotel room and I just noticed uh, here just bear with me for one second that <laughs> The colors off a little bit. I just need to increase There that should be better There we go. So that should be a little bit better because it looks different from 
my software, my streaming software to um, here on YouTube. So that's uh, <laughs> what it is. Jesse, what was my first, my very first vehicle? My very first vehicle, let's see. Uh, my first vehicle actually was a motorcycle, it was a Honda 350. Uh, my first actual vehicle that had four wheels on it was a 1971 GMC half-ton pickup truck with a straight six, and it had three in the tree. Uh, who can tell me out there <laughs> what a three in the tree is? Uh, it was, it's a manual transmission. Classic, you have yourself a good Christmas as well. That's awesome. And somebody wanted to know something about CDL uh trucks and uh, taking the road test for truck driving. Uh, there's five components for a CDL truck driving course. Uh, five elements that you have to learn. Uh, first one is turning. You have to be able to get a big truck around corners, especially in a city and urban area. And of course you have to remember that these trucks are 75 feet long. So that's your biggest challenge is actually maneuvering the vehicle in and around urban areas. The second one is shifting, and shifting is going to consume all of your time. And unfortunately, because you're spending so much time learning how to shift a non synchromesh transmission, it tends to undermine the turning, which is much more important than shifting. If you miss a gear, it's not really going to hurt you. But if you miss a turn, you may ram the truck up against a fixed object. So that's the, that's the second thing. The third thing is pre-trip inspection. Uh, you have to do a complete and thorough running commentary pre-trip inspection on the vehicle. And I talk a little bit about that. There's a couple of videos here on the channel that you can look at. And actually in the new year, I'm going to get those pre-trip inspection videos up here on the channel and go through that information for you so you can have a look at it. Now, so that's, so the three major components of a CDL course, a truck driving course, tractor trailer course are turning, shifting, pre-trip inspection. And then the two minor components of it are couple, coupling, un, unhooking and hooking. And then the last one is backing. And depending on where you take your test in the world, that's gonna, that, the challenge can change. So for example, in London, Ontario, when I did testing for uh, truck driving students in London, Ontario, they had to back around a corner. So they had to pull up and back around a corner. It was fairly challenging. You know, it's kind of like on the scale of one to 10, 10 being the most difficult in terms of backing. Uh, it was probably a seven. Now in Victoria, British Columbia, when they backed up, they had to parallel park. And on the scale of backing from, you know, one being easy and 10 being hard, Parallel parking in a tractor trailer is probably eight, eight and a half. It's a fairly complex maneuver. And then here in Vernon, British Columbia, when they back up, they only got to back up 50 feet in a straight line. So, you know, on the scale of one to 10, that's like a three. I mean, it's very easy to back up a tractor trailer unit in a straight line. So that's, uh, those are the five components. So just over those quickly, turning, shifting, pre-trip inspection, coupling, hook and unhook, and then backing up depending on where you're taking your test in the world. Okay, uh, 217, yes, I use OBS for my streaming here and it works It works really well and I spent a little bit of time with it a couple of weeks ago and got all the transitions and whatnot uh, much better. I still need to do a little bit more work with OBS, but that's essentially what I use for streaming uh, is OBS. All about vehicles, I know how to drive a three in the tree. My father has a 73 Chrysler Newport sedan with a 383, <laughs> ah, I hate to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a boat. That is simply a boat, a 73 Chrysler Newport. That's a boat, yeah. Frank, my friend, how are you? How are things there uh, on the in the thumb of Michigan? That's awesome. Uh, Killerman, best way to get used to driving a longer, wider car. I feel like I can't brake smoothly anymore in the car. I'm actually driving now, ha. Huh? Uh, Killerman, what I suggest to you is, is just go down to the parking lot and just drive around with it in the parking lot and get used to the steering, get used to the braking. You don't accelerate down the parking lot, nail the brakes on, you don't hard acceleration, go around corners, you know, and those types of things. And that will help you out. And Corey will get the video up here for you on learning to drive. And there's some uh, exercises in there that you can do that will help you out to get used to that bigger, longer, wider vehicle. And Frank says, three in the tree, three speed manual on a steering column. We had a Ford F100 like that. Yes. I want to get, 
an older vehicle that's got a three in the tree just so I can give people the keys and ask them to move it uh, just to see whether they can do it or not. They're actually quite easy to drive. It's just an H pattern. It's the same as any other manual transmission. And one is down and towards you, second is straight up to the top, and then you go into neutral, and third is up at the top at the back and reverses usually across and down. I think that's how it works, if I remember correctly. Uh, Uh, Corey, is there anything in driving that is commonly or somewhat commonly taught, but you believe, no, that's not quite right? Oh, that's a good question, Corey. Let me think about that for a sec. Uh, Jesse, do you need to register a vehicle before you get it insured? Because I'm getting an Altima after I pass, so I'm not sure what the process I'm financing it. I'm an apprentice. Uh, Jesse, where are you in the world? Because yes, most vehicles... Uh, he, here in British Columbia, you have to register and put insurance on it all at one and the same time. Most places you have to register the vehicle and when you register the vehicle, you have to show that you have proof of insurance for that vehicle, otherwise they won't let you register it. Okay? Uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of fraud around that and what happens is that people register the vehicle, they come in, they show their insurance and because they can't afford insurance, then as soon as they register the vehicle, they'll go and cancel the insurance. And, you know, unfortunately, we do have a number of people in the world who are driving around in vehicles that it, uh, uh, you know, they're not insured. So if they get into a crash, that's, that's not good. Okay. So, uh, Jesse, you're in Alberta. Excellent. Um, okay. Uh, boss babe, uh, I don't know if six driving lessons is enough for me to take my road test. If you're just doing six driving lessons all by themselves without any extra practice outside of that to practice the skills and techniques that you're doing in the six driving lessons, then no, six driving lessons is not enough. However, if you're doing six driving lessons and you're practicing as much as possible outside of those six driving lessons doing the techniques and whatnot, then, then that's going to be all right. Okay, then six will be enough. Oh, great. Uh, one is straight up. Two is back. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that now. So yes, one is down, reverses up at the top at the front, and then it's back up as second and third is down. I remember now. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Kellerman, I passed my test, but I think I have to wait for my dad to call the insurance company before I can drive alone. Uh, yeah, because you're going to have to be put on the insurance your dad's vehicle, Killerman. Uh, and your dad will have to uh, make sure that the insurance company has you registered as a driver on your vehicle there. All right, so I'm going, I'm still thinking about Corey's question about things that I don't, there's actually, Corey, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with uh, when it comes to my profession and the way that we teach people how to drive. Uh, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of what we do is not does not prepare students, does not prepare drivers to be able to drive safely and defensively. A lot of the stuff that they do, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a formality. It's a bit of a game. For example, the fact that students have to stay rigidly at the speed limit for the purposes of passing a road test is not going to help them out when they actually go out and start learning to drive. There are some other fundamental skills. One of my fundamental basic beliefs is, is that it's about space management. And if we can teach students to maintain space around their vehicle, I think that the number of crashes would be significantly reduced. The problem is, is that most drivers follow too close, they stop too close to other vehicles, they're too close to pedestrians and those types of things. So this is what happens uh, that causes crashes and leads to crashes and leads to unpredictable actions on the roadway. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, the problem with driving instruction is, is that a lot of people don't take it. It's kind of a necessary evil. <laughs> I know that as being a driving instructor, that being a driving instructor is tantamount to, you know, being a used car salesman. People don't really come to you unless they have a specific problem that they want solved. And that specific problem is they want to know how to pass a road test. And if we can help them do that, then, then that's all they come for. Uh, they do they don't stick around after that once they get their license then they're gone and I know that most people here on the YouTube channel They're only here for four to six weeks and then they're gone because they got their license and there's not really much else They're gonna do here. I mean they might come back for a little bit of defensive driving or upgrade their license But for the most part, you know, I know that it's a short duration that my viewers are here 
Okay, uh, so I don't think that really answered your, your question, Corey. Uh, I'll, I'll give that some more thought though for you, for sure. Okay, Andrew, do you have any advice on city driving? Uh, yes, Andrew, city driving, excellent question. Again, it comes back to space management. Make sure that you're following at two to three second following distance as well. The other thing, Andrew, when you stop in traffic, make sure that you can see the, the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. Don't drive right up close to the vehicles in front of you uh, because that just takes away your defensive posturing. Uh, if something happens, you can't drive around the vehicle. For example, the vehicle breaks down or something like that, or the vehicle's coming up behind you or coming up too fast. Uh, and you could potentially be rear-ended. Uh, if you have enough that space, that buffer space in front of you, then uh, you can drive out around the vehicle and that vehicle won't rear-end you. The other thing is uh, stay up with traffic flow, drive with the traffic flow, you know, and scan vigilantly at intersections and those types of things and make sure that you stay away from pedestrians. You know, try and give them one vehicle length of space. I have so many people when I walk around here in town that just, you know, drive right up against me and it just really bothers me when they do that because I, I don't feel safe, that's for sure. Okay, uh, 217, I got through with 10 lessons but I need much more practice with it. The only reason that I didn't do more practice is that being in New York City is that you need a car with a uh, second brake installed. Uh, 217, yes, New York City would be a bit more challenging to get out and get around and drive. Uh, and especially if you don't have a mentor, you don't have a family member or somebody else who has a vehicle that can help you drive around and learn how to drive, then it's going to be a bit tougher for sure. Okay, uh, I have a question. What is a fair price for insurance for a G2 driver who has completed driving lessons per monthly? Um, here, even though I have passed being here for about a year and a half. Uh... <laughs> Uh, insurance I think all about vehicles and maybe some of the other smart drivers can answer this question as well about what they're paying for insurance as a new driver I know that for new drivers I, I've heard it's somewhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a year which is gonna put it somewhere in the hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars a month mark I know it is incredibly expensive for insurance for new drivers uh, Ryan do you know Troy Dan no I don't know Troy Dan who is that person uh, I don't need a license with New York City with everything has ride sharing apps to mass transit. Yes, uh, that is one of the things about New York City. And 217, uh, same thing with Melbourne, Australia. When I lived in Melbourne, Australia, I never had a car. I rode my bicycle or I took public transit. And, you know, <laughs> it's funny being around, you know, in different places in the world and they, they everybody complains about public transit. But uh, I lived on the 78 route in Melbourne which was a tram route, uh, the, the tram came every eight minutes. I mean, I never even looked at a schedule. I mean, I have lived in cities where, you know, planning uh, planning a route on a local transit bus, it, you know, it's it's a half an hour exercise. Uh, for example, when I lived in London, Ontario, I mean, if you on Sundays, if you didn't plan out exactly which route you're going to be taking and when your connections were, uh, you know, it was going to take you a couple hours to get to where you were going to go. And I can remember... Uh, living in London, Ontario for years taking public transit and then I moved to Ottawa which is the federal capital here in Canada and I was out on a Sunday and I allowed myself two hours to take the transit to get to the train station because I was going back home to London to visit my parents on the train so I, I allowed two hours to get there but not realizing that the Ottawa transit is like incredible it has its own roads and uh, I was at the train station in 20 minutes I was like well how did that happen? And I'm sure it's very similar in New York City that they have this just incredible transit system and these large metropolitan cities that have high density, high population density, they have really good transit systems and it's really great and you don't need a car. So why would you need a car? And the same thing when I lived in Melbourne, Australia, like I said. And the other thing, it didn't snow in Melbourne, so I just rode my bicycle all the time, which was great, okay? Uh, Andrew, uh, you helped me pass my road test and you have taught me tons about driving. I will never leave this channel. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andrew, for your patronage. It's, it's awesome to hear that. That's really great. I really, really appreciate that. And we're going to, you know, start rolling out a lot of stuff next year. Uh, you know, one of my, one of my, I'm just, I'm really, uh, I'm going to say this and I'm just going to, uh, tell you honestly what what has kind of happened here with smart drive testing this year uh i i kind of abandoned the video the the channel 
I wasn't making videos in the way that I was, uh, and I went off and did another business in the summertime, so I kind of left for about three months. I still answered comments as best I could, and I still did the live streams on Sunday, but some a lot of weeks, you know, I just didn't get a video up. I didn't get a video up for months, actually. So I'm, I've, I've hired a business coach, and I'm really going through a transition of what I want to do with the channel, where I want to see the channel go. And, you know, I've talked a lot about this with my business coach and I, I finally came up with what I wanted to do. The big goal that I saw for smart drive test. And I've re I'm really committed to what I want to do with smart drive test. Uh, and this year I'm committed to putting up two videos a week plus doing my live streams. And so I'm sitting down right now and I'm planning out and coming up with a list of videos. I kind of mentioned this a little bit during the presentation, but I'm coming up with a list of videos and I need to come up with a hundred plus videos, 104 videos for the course of the year to get two videos up a week. So anybody, all of the smart drivers out there, all of you who are listening on the replay, uh, if you could leave me a comment about a video suggestion that a topic that you want to see done on driving and it can be anything motorcycles tractor trailer units being a pedestrian being a cyclist whatever it is whatever it has to do about driving uh, if i don't already have the video done i will do the video i'll make the video and i'll put it on the list of things uh the list of videos that are going to be made this year for right now the biggest concentration of videos that are going to get done this year are going to be the CDL videos, the, the pre-trip inspection, how to turn a tractor trailer unit, how to shift a tractor trailer unit, how to back up, trailering, motorcycles and those types of things. So that's the biggest kind of thrust of what I'm going to do with the Smart Drive Test channel this year. And of course, I'm going to do more, uh, you know, more courses over at the Smart Drive Test website and I'm going to try and figure out, you know, how to just build this bigger because really what I want to do uh, is I want to become the Wikipedia of driving. If you want to know anything about driving, you want you come to Smart Drive Test. That's what that's my that's my big goal for Smart Drive Test for this upcoming year. And my commitment to you is is that for the Smart Drive Test YouTube channel, I'm going to get up two videos a week plus do the live stream. So it's it's going to be a busy upcoming 2019. And uh, you know I've gone through a big trans transition with this, and I think that all of us are going to benefit for this. And you know the channel has been incredibly successful much more successful than when I started three years ago and I didn't know the first thing about making a video or doing live streams or those types of things. And you know, I wanna thank all of the smart drivers for making this channel the success that it is because without you uh, and without your comments, without your contributions, your questions, your suggestions, this channel would not be what it is now because I listen to the comments, I take them on board and I try and make it better. I try and make it the best that I can. So, you know, Happy holidays to all of you and thank you so much for all of the support that you've given to this channel and made it possible. All right. Uh, Ryan, Troyden is a living legend. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have to Google that afterwards then. Wesley, uh, Rick, I'm a new subscriber. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas. Thank you so much, Wesley. That is awesome. Uh, it's about 2000 as a secondary driver. My situation soon will be my father is buying me a grand caravan and I will be primary driver. So I'm wondering what insurance will cost for me. Uh, you'll need, you'll need to call an insurance company. They'll be able to give you a better answer than I can. Cause I'm just sort of guessing. Uh, okay. Yusuf, uh, thanks you so much for your awesome comments. That's awesome. Thank you. Merry Christmas. All the best for you. Jesse, I never in a million years thought my first car was going to be a Nissan. <laughs> and why is that, Jesse? Why did you think you weren't going to be driving a Nissan? That's funny. Uh, Boss Babe, what is the best advice to perfect right and left turns? Okay. Um, the best advice is, as Corey will get the video up for you on learning how to drive and go to the parking lot get some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and work with those in the parking lot that will improve all of your overall driving okay ah uh, drive smart bc hello tim merry christmas thank you for road safety efforts and i look forward to uh following you in the new year rick thank you so much tim and greatly appreciate your support of the channel greatly appreciate all the work that you do over at drive smart bc and if anybody here is getting a license in british columbia or wants to know anything about driving uh, drive smart bc is an awesome resource tim does great work over there okay uh devara thank you very so much uh you are most welcome okay jesse best way to clean acid off battery posts 
Uh, Jesse, the best way to do that is to disconnect the battery completely. So take both the positive and negative terminals off. Sometimes you might want to take the battery out of the vehicle because you might want to scrape that into a plastic bag or something that's not going to get you know all that corrosion all over the place. But it's usually a wire brush. You can buy some, uh, you know, there is cleaners that you can buy at the local auto shop and those types of things. But essentially, what you want is you can you can just brush it off with a wire brush and those types of things. But generally, if you got corrosion, you got something else going on with the battery there and those types of things. So you might want to have it checked by a mechanic if you're not a mechanic. Uh, 380. Hello, my friend. How are you? <laughs> uh, Tim, that's great. Yeah, autocorrect. I was cursing that on my phone today, so I know what you're doing. Anna, uh, how do you deal with tailgating? Excellent question, Anna. Uh, tailgating, what you want to do when somebody is tailgating you, Anna, is preferably if you're on a multi-lane road, you want to just slow down a little bit to encourage them to pass you. If you're not on a multi-lane road, what you want to do is you want to increase the space in front of your vehicle. By increasing the space in front of the vehicle, that allows you to make uh, to uh, reduce the chances that you're going to have to make aggressive moves because essentially what you're now doing is by increasing the space in front of your vehicle you're now driving for you and the person that's tailgating you so that's the number one technique uh, that you want to do when you're dealing with tailgaters is to increase the space in front of your vehicle that way you're going to be able to brake more gently you're going to be able to accelerate more gently and those types of things so that's the best way to deal with tailgaters all right uh Devara, thank you so much for that. Eric, uh, I've been practicing because your videos helped out a lot and never leave your videos and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well, Eric. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Corey's got the video up there for you on how to learn to drive. Great exercises in there for doing slow speed maneuvers and those types of things. And I am convinced that if you can improve your slow speed maneuvers, you can uh, go to a parking lot, do that two by four exercise in there, which essentially you just get an eight foot chunk of two by four throw it down on the parking lot and try to drive over it with this, the, the tires on the passenger side of the vehicle and the tires on the driver's side, both in forward and in reverse, uh, then, uh, then you're gonna learn about space and place of the vehicle, wh where the vehicle is in space and place rather, and you're gonna learn how to work the primary controls, the steering wheel, the brake, and the throttle. And when you go into the parking lot, you know, be a bit aggressive. Uh, as well, uh, how to control speed of the vehicle. Have a look at that video. Corey will get that one up for you too. And we go through some exercises on how you show you how to control the throttle. And that will work for the brake as well. So do those exercises and that will help you with your overall driving. Uh, baking soda, 380. Excellent. There you go. Uh, awesome uh, suggestion there about baking soda. I hadn't thought about that. And that will work for cleaning the terminals on the, uh, on the battery. <laughs> Killerman, how many miles are on your Honda now? Uh, the Honda now has 325,000K here. Just bear with me. And uh, I'm just doing the conversion here. Power, length, kilometer, mile. So 325, 200,000 miles. So it has 325,000 kilometers, 200,000 miles on the Honda. <laughs> <laughs> and I've put, uh, yeah, I've just about put 100,000 kilometers on it, which is 60,000 miles. Uh, Andrew, my big money boss, still a part of the channel because whenever we watched your videos in Driver's Ed, we died laughing if you said that. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I haven't talked to big money boss for some time. He hasn't been around for months. Uh, he moved down to Vegas, and then I think he just got busy with his life and those types of things. So, yeah. But, no, I, I still remember he's still here. He, uh, he Actually, some of the suggestions that Big Money Boss had for videos, it was interesting because the YouTube channel, I've done a lot of videos that aren't really part of normal driver education uh, teaching and training. But when he would ask me for particular videos, I would kind of, you know, do them thinking, you know, nobody's going to watch this. And then realized after I'd finished doing the videos that uh, some of the video suggestions that he'd come up with were, were some of my most popular videos. That one, for example, on speed control was one of my most popular videos. So when, when 
you, the smart drivers, make video suggestions and I do them. Often those are the videos that you want and that's what I'm trying to do is to, is to do the videos uh, that you guys want, right? Because I want to try and help you out as much as possible to get your license and be successful in driving and not end up in a crash. So that's what we're trying to do. And again, there's a, there's a lot of questions here. So if I miss your question, just retype your question and I'll get to it. Um, I'm not missing you on purpose. I'm just, it's, it's busy. So there's lots going on here. Okay, all about vehicles. Uh, Jesse, disconnect the battery, take hot water and wash off the acid once you pull it out of the car. Take sandpaper and sand down the terminals, reinstall the battery. Yes, and the other thing that you can do is you can, a wire brush will work too. Uh, you can buy those specialized tools for cleaning terminals and whatnot, but you don't need one of those. Exactly what uh, All About Vehicle said here is that you just need some sandpaper and a wire brush. That'll work for you. Uh, Ultima, it has slight acid buildup. Okay, Jesse, there you go. 380, uh, thanks for asking. Always better when following videos. <laughs> Hoping nobody calls us out for the next two days. But it's what I do, so can't complain. Excellent 380. That's really great. Jaden, uh, mom's car, when she takes you to school or bus stop, her car told me to put seatbelt law, but not. It's uh, Chrysler 200. Um, so the Jaden, I'm just trying to understand that comment. So the vehicle tells you to put your seatbelt on. Is that what you're saying, Jaden? Excellent. Anna, what is the best way to deal with nerves before a road test? Uh, Anna, the best way to deal with that. Uh, what am I doing? You need to look at the video on top 10 tips for road tests. And that will go through what you need to do on the morning of. But essentially, just a quick overview. Uh, you know, show up early, do a little bit of a, a warm up drive, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Don't make it longer than 30 minutes for your little warm up drive before you go into the test center. Make sure you breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and breathe all the way through to your navel. By breathing, taking those deep breaths, that forces your body to relax. So make sure you're focusing on your breathing. Go in. If you have to check in, you know, do a dry run before you go down to the test center. Don't just go to the test center on the day of your test. Go in prior to that, a couple of days before that, and then you'll be able to figure out where you need to park, whether you need to back in or those types of things. Because uh, one of the smart drivers told me the other day that there was a test center that you couldn't back into the space prior to the test. And one of the things that I recommend for all students is that when you get down to the test center, back into the space but this one test center you couldn't do that so no center sort of what the procedure is if you're not going down with a driving instructor you're gonna have to figure this out on your own so go down a couple of days before your road test and sort of figure this all out figure out whether you need to wait in your car whether you need to go in and check in some places you need to check in other places you've already scheduled an appointment so you just need to go and wait in the parking lot and the examiner will come out and show up know that you do need to schedule an on-road road test okay as well if you need to go in, show up early, make sure you go in, go to the toilet because it's really hard to do a road test competently if you're, you know, got your legs crossed and you, you got to go pee or something like that. So <laughs> do that as well. Make sure that you have your identification, make sure you have your learner's permit, you have money and you have a secondary piece of ID because you're going to need that for your road test to check in and those types of things. So those are some of the ways that you can reduce the stress and tension when you go down for your road test uh, on the day of and be successful. Okay, Epic, uh, watching from Clinton, New Jersey, very useful tips, Rick, and for the holiday season, most highways have heavy enforcement on regulations during the nighttime, wondering if there is a 5 to 10 mile, uh, yes, uh, Epic, there definitely is, uh, you can still, you know, keep up with the traffic flow, and traffic flow is going to run 5 to 10 miles an hour over the posted speed limit, police officers and other enforcement agencies are not looking for speeding for the most part during the Christmas holidays. Most of the time what they're looking for is drinking and driving because unfortunately there are a lot, a, a higher number of people during the holiday seasons who are imbibing and getting behind the wheel and driving, okay? Ovia, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you for teaching me how to drive, turning left and right. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. That is really awesome and happy holidays to you and your family and all of the best. Odie, how are you my friend? Can you also topic, uh, tackle topics on long driving trips, car preparation, want to bring uh, pearls and pitfalls example, uh, especially for a newbie. Thanks, Rick, for making me a defensive driver. You are most welcome, Odie, and we're glad that we could help out. Uh, long driving trips. Uh, what do we got? 
Uh, nine tips for family driving. Corey will get that video up for you. That's a really good one to have a look at. Jesse, synthetic oil versus non-synthetic. Uh, uh, Jesse, newer vehicles are going to require synthetic oil. The problem, or not the problem, the challenge with synthetic oil is, is that yes, it is more slippery, but uh, if you have an older vehicle, you don't want to run synthetic oil in it. Uh, synthetic oil is going to cost you a lot more. It's probably going to cost you twice as much for an oil change with synthetic oil. Uh, and my brother, who is a mechanic, I asked him this question about synthetic oil. And he said, you know, if you're changing the oil every 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers, as you should, he said, you know, for the filter that you put in it and the oil that you put in it, it doesn't really matter. However, if you're driving a newer vehicle, it's going to require synthetic oil, you know, something in the last five years. Something from 2013 and on, you're gonna have to, it's gonna recommend that you put synthetic oil in it. But essentially, what you need to do is, excuse me, you just need to follow the manu the vehicle manufacturer's recommendation of what oil you're gonna put in the vehicle. You know, uh, 5W30 and those types of things. And uh, have a look at the video on how to change your oil. I did do a video on that, and that will give you some further information about how to change your oil and what you need to look for in terms of oil and those types of things because that will help you out with that. Okay, uh, Ryan, do I play Fortnite? No, I don't play Fortnite. I don't have a lot of time for <laughs> video games, unfortunately, and those types of things. Uh, Killerman, how often should you check various fluid levels and stuff? Uh, Killerman, probably about every couple of weeks you should check, you know, pop the hood, check the oil and the fluids and those types of things under the hood. Other than that, you know, you're, every two weeks is, is good. Anna, my son is always stopping hard at a stop sign or lights. What is good tips to prevent that? Uh, Anna, he just basically needs to learn how to use the brake better and have a look. Just scroll back up there in the comments and find the video that Corey put up on learning how to drive. Take him down to a parking lot, get some of those uh, pylons, those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons and get them to work on slow speed maneuvers. You know, get them to race down the parking lot, hammer on the brake, go down the parking lot, do a nice smooth stop, those types of things. All of that will help improve his uh, control of the primary controls, the brake, the throttle, and the steering wheel. And that will, that will help out. All right, Elder, uh, what's your best advice on changing lanes? Because sometimes I get nervous and slow down. Let me know, thanks. Uh, Elder, the video that you want to look at is changing lanes. It's a it's a really excellent video. I go through the whole thing. I got cameras in the car uh, with a camera on the mirror and those types of things, and that will show you how to do that. But essentially, just a quick a summary of how to change lanes. Uh, so you want to maintain your speed. If you're practicing for a road test, you got to do the posted speed limit. Okay. Mirror signal shoulder check. So you're going to put your signal on. You're going to check your mirror, and you're going to shoulder check, and you're going to make sure you got a space. And essentially, you're going to know that you have enough of a space because when you shoulder check, there's no vehicle in the blind spot as well. Uh, the vehicle should be kind of in the front of the vehicle behind you in the other lane should be in that top corner of the mirror. And again, have a look at that video. Corey will get that up for you. And so signal on minimum three flashes on the signal before you start moving over. So click, 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 click. Three flashes and then mirror signal shoulder check again. Well, your signal's already on, so it's just a mirror and shoulder check. Nobody in the blind spot. Start moving over. Now, you need to accelerate slightly as you're changing lanes because what happens is, is that you're moving on an angle, and because you're moving on an angle, it's more distance. So to maintain constant speed, you have to speed up just a little bit as you're changing lanes. And then just before you enter the lane, shoulder check again, move across, leave your signal on the entire time that you, until you're completely in the other lane, and then cancel your signal once you change lanes. And again, that video will give you more uh, more definitive, it'll give you lots of examples and I show you how to do that in the city and as well I show you how to do it out on the highway as well. So there's lots of good information in that video and that'll help you out. Jaden, uh, I got your answer but I was in the shower at the time <laughs> but I'm back. Uh, every time my mom uh, puts her seatbelt on it doesn't tell her, it only tells on the driver's side. Yes, uh, some cars, some of the older cars won't tell you on the passenger side, they'll just tell you on the driver's side. Kino, happy holidays, Rick, and thanks for all these wonderful tips. Uh, Kino, you're most welcome. Happy holidays to you as well, my friend. All the best for Christmas. Uh, okay, so there's the video for changing lanes. Uh, Andrew should make a car buying guide video like uh, what to look for and how to negotiate what car is best for you. Yes, Andrew, that is an excellent suggestion. And I am going to take that comment right now and I'm going to...
save that and I'm going to make a video on that because that is on my list of things that I need to do for videos. Just bear with me here one sec. There we go. Excellent. So I have that up there and that is going to be one of the videos for sure because I've been thinking about that for a while that I need to make a video on how to buy a car because there's lots of good information and I can actually find somebody to do an interview with and talk to them because there are a few things uh, that I've learned over the years of buying cars. Uh, uh, one of the misnomers, I'll just, I'll just say this quickly, one of the misnomers about uh, buying vehicles uh, it used to be many years ago that your parents, for example, used to be able to pay cash for the vehicle and they would get a better price on the vehicle because all cars are negotiable in terms of price. Know that. Uh, so you have, you can barter. You don't just have to go in and pay the price for the vehicle. You can negotiate what the price is on the vehicle. Uh, one of the salespeople told me years ago when I was buying a vehicle, he said, when you pay cash, he said, uh, you're not going to get a better deal in this day and age because all of the, uh, car dealerships get a kickback on financing so if you get financing they get a they get a kickback from the financing company because there's a lot of money in terms of that so it's better to sort of let them think that you're gonna finance the vehicle and then when you come in to finance the vehicle if you can pay for the vehicle just say oh no I changed my mind on the finance and just pay it out so that's how you're gonna get a better price on it now also know that for domestic vehicles for those of us here in North America Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors, uh, the negotiation price is probably going to be around $5,000 from the asking price to how much you can actually get off the vehicle. Now, if you're buying a Honda or a Toyota, uh, from the asking price to the, what you can negotiate on that vehicle is probably only going to be about $1,000 or $1,500. And know that there's going to be other expenses as well. They charge you for registering the vehicle. They charge you for paperwork those types of things so don't be surprised if you go into a dealership and there's a whole bunch of extra costs that they're tacking on as well when you for the purchase price of the vehicle all right okay so we'll just answer up because we're getting close to the end here we're getting into the last five minutes just want to answer a few more questions uh, I set my mirrors out in my father's truck so you can I can see my blind spots it's not because I don't want to do a shoulder check it's hard to do one in the truck especially with a truck cap uh, yeah uh, all about vehicles you still want to do a shoulder check though because you're only 90 degree shoulder checking uh, I know what you're saying but you're not going to be able to completely eliminate blind spots with the mirrors even if you have some of those convex mirrors on there so I do really suggest that you still continue to shoulder check excellent Alex I love your videos I had my G2 for a few months now when changing lanes how far back should the car in the other lane be in order to safely pull in front of the car without cutting them off yes uh, essentially Alex what you want to do is the car should be kind of in the top portion of the mirror and have a look again at that video that Corey put up on changing lanes because like I said I do have a, a, a camera on the mirror and you can see how far the car is back when I make the lane change but essentially it should be kind of in the top third top outer third of the mirror before you uh, so there's enough space there for you to actually move over into the other lane uh, video suggestion uh, I don't have a video about skidding in snow and how to get out of it please do a video on this yes I could do another video on that that's excellent uh, Killerman uh, you should expand into car maintenance videos <laughs> uh, <laughs> Killerman I don't yeah there's some stuff that I can do uh, yeah I'm trying to convince my brother who's a, who's just an excellent mechanic to start a YouTube channel so I'm, I'm working on that as well I'll probably work on him a little bit more when I go home next summer because that would be really good Andrew, I'll just make a video on getting pulled over and how to handle your emotions and how to speak with the officer and what you should expect in the event that you get pulled over. Yes, another excellent suggestion, uh, Andrew, and definitely do that. And actually, one of the people that I probably should talk to about that is probably Tim, because Tim is a retired police officer, so that might work as well. Excellent. Blessed. Aloha. Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. Thank you so much for the wishes. That's really awesome. Uh, 217, my family does have a car in New York City, so that's why I've gotten a license and I can drive that car. Excellent. That's really great. And uh, you have to tell us about your adventures there uh, in New York City. Uh, Jaden, I also got mad because my dad forgot that Bush Gardens was doing behind the scenes of the rides, and I got so mad <laughs> they didn't send emails uh, to us. Uh, yeah, that would be disappointing, unfortunately, for Christmas. So, yeah, so we're at the top of the hour here, and thank you everybody for asking questions on the uh, 
on the live stream here at Smart Drive Test. And again, happy holidays to everybody. Thank you for your holiday wishes. I uh, just, it overwhelms me how successful this channel has been in the last three years. It's been a really great journey. And like I said, I'm going through a bit of a transition and making some plans for next year about what I want to do with the channel and how I want to move it forward. And as I said, I really want this to be, you know, the Wikipedia of driving. If you want to know anything about driving, this is going to be the place you're going to come. The other thing that I'm going to do, uh, I finally have the air brake book done. I have one more video I need to shoot for the air brake book, and I'm going to release the air brake book uh, the 1st of January. So the air brake book will be available for sale over the um, Smart Drive Test website. So anybody who's doing uh, CDL license, they can get the air brake book over there. And congratulations to all of the people who have made uh, suggestions, or congratulations to all the people who have passed the license in the last week. If you have suggestions for videos, leave those for me as well. Hit that thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Smart Drive Test. And if you have a video coming up over the holidays, good luck with that. And remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the great answer. The, <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Happy holidays. All the best to everybody, to you and your family. Have a great night. Bye now.